UFC parent company Endeavor possibly rules themselves out of purchasing WWE. Kenny Omega comments on rumors he could be joining WWE upon the expiration of his AEW contract. Shawn Michaels accepts Grayson Waller's invitation to appear NXT Roadblock. Could Demon Finn Balor be appearing at WrestleMania this year? We've got the ratings for this week's edition of Monday Night Raw. Alter Bridge, could they be performing live at WrestleMania this year? Some WWE fans are upset about a change to the Women's Tag Team Championship match as we head into WrestleMania. Naomi is reportedly recovering from shoulder surgery. JG Dolan conducts an emotional promo on last night's edition of NXT. Speaking of NXT, Nathan Fraser returns and has a title shot immediately. Another attack in the NXT parking lot. Tiffany Stratton wants a shot at the NXT Women's Championship. More matches have been announced for next week's edition of NXT Roadblock. The Alpha Academy, could they be splitting up while well, Chad Gable and Otis are reporting on the fence about the matter. Reels is coming to Peacock, but MLW is not because of the WWE deal. And also, WWE files to trademark some interesting past WWE names. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. And let's start off talking about the possible sale of WWE. Now we've heard the likes of the Saudi PIF being rumored to be interested in purchasing the multi-billion dollar entertainment juggernaut. We've also heard the likes of Comcast kind of rule themselves out of purchasing the company. One name that was linked to purchasing Vince McMahon's WWE empire was UFC parent company Endeavor. But now they have possibly also ruled themselves out of making such a big purchase to buy WWE. UFC's parent company CEO has commented on their potential interest in purchasing WWE. UFC parent company Endeavor held their fourth quarter and full year earnings call for 2022 yesterday afternoon. Now, during the call, Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel was asked about the company's potential interest in the ongoing WWE sale pursuit. Now, he was asked the question. We've got actually the comments here on this video. So let's hear what he had to say and possibly how he ruled himself out of a WWE acquisition. Just a quick question on, on the M&A environment, especially now that you guys are down below four times. I mean, does it make you guys sort of think more aggressively about potential acquisitions and then... Obviously, the, the big one out there uh, seems to be WWE. Uh, just any initial thoughts or, or how you got, you know, some commentary on how you look at, at, at that entity and, and any comments on, it looks like Vince thinks it's, it's worth $9 billion. Just any, any thoughts or color you can provide there would be great. Thanks. Well, uh, one is we don't, unless you want me to go to jail, we don't comment on our M&A practices. But um, here's what I would say to you. Is we're truly focused, as Jason said, on delevering. We're not going to do anything that would uh, increase our leverage at this point in time. I would just say, as it relates, um, we constantly are looking at, at things out there, but we're not going to leverage ourselves up because we've done a good job of deleveraging and we're going to continue to deleverage. As it relates to the WWE, um, it's an unbelievable product. Vince is an unbelievable, you know, created a great business. Uh, we've had a long-standing relationship with them uh, over two decades. Uh, we're doing as I indicated, on location business with them, Endeavor streaming business with them. Um, so, you know, we, you know, his business is really valuable. Um, and but we're not going to do anything as it relates to kind of changing our leverage position right now. So, Jay, I don't know if you have any other comments. Yeah, I, I would just add, you know, given you know we have you know over seven hundred fifty million dollars of cash in the balance sheet and uh, projecting a really good cash flow generation this year, that we certainly. Uh, feel we have the ability to keep executing on M and A. We're an acquisitive company, um, but using our cash and, and our public equity as, as the opposing currency in order to uh, execute on our strategies and still remain sub four times. And as I already said, and I said, we're committed to continuing to deleverage, and you know we'll view all this opportunity through you know capital allocation and the best use of capital for the company to create the most shareholder value. Now, interesting, because there's always been this conversation, hasn't there, about Endeavor being able to afford WW. Could they afford a multi-billion dollar purchase when, in comparison to the likes of the Saudi PIF, Comcast, etc., et their revenue just isn't that high? Now, as mentioned earlier on in the call, it was noted that Endeavor is doing what they can and what they need to as a company to deleverage their debt. It was something that was spoken about just there. This seems to imply that they're not seeking to accumulate additional debt by purchasing WWE, 
with Vince McMahon reportedly seeking $9 billion for the sale. Of course, if we get any more updates, we'll let you know. But seemingly, Endeavor joining the likes of Comcast and saying now's maybe not the right time and maybe WWE is just too expensive and out of their reach. Now, Kenny Omega has been a name that's linked to WWE recently. Kenny Omega's four-year AEW contract was set to come to an end this February, but was extended due to injury. As previously reported, the extension is roughly nine months, and we'll see Omega remain in AEW until at least November 2023. That hasn't stopped speculation of a move to WWE, though, with Omega reportedly being open-minded to the possibility of a move. Omega himself has now commented on the rumors on the sessions with Renee Paquette, saying, quote, sometimes the first thing that pops into your mind is probably how you really feel. The first thing that came into my mind wasn't a title, wasn't some kind of accolade. I feel like whatever I can contribute to wrestling, I want to be able to help in, in the next generation realize their potential as quick as possible or quicker than I was able to. If I can give anyone advice or push them into a certain direction that can lead to something good for them career-wise down the road, that is where I like to see myself. I don't feel like I have too many goals or aspirations of my own anymore. Paquette would ask Omega how that mindset weighs upon him with Omega replying quotes I feel like am I wasting my time here do I not even deserve my position if I'm not looking for some sort of measure of success for myself am I being ungrateful those thoughts still fill my head a little bit because I felt that when I was motivated to win the G1, when I was motivated to win the IWGP Heavyweight Championship or win Match of the Year Award or win Wrestler of the Year Award or random thing like, wouldn't it be nice if I could win the PWI 500? It got to a point where I was kind of creating goals to achieve just to have something as that checklist started to fill up. And I'm so thankful and grateful that I was able to achieve those things. It became so much less about me and became more about, well, I've got this resume now and I know that I'm breaking down and I know there are people that will have 10, 15 years on me and they can much easier and with much less of a struggle get to where I am today and maybe I can save them some mental anguish or being away from their family for a couple more years if I can help them. That's the position I feel I'm in right now. Now, it had been previously reported that WWE was confident they could sign Kenny Omega if indeed the possibility did arose. So Omega kind of not really saying too much there, but not ruling anything out either, which certainly is going to be an interesting story as the year progresses. Shawn Michaels and Grayson Waller has been this story that's been gone going on NXT television recently. It appears that Grayson Waller has gotten his wish. Senior Vice President of Talent Development Creative Shawn Michaels will appear at NXT Roadblock. Michaels took to social media to announce he was going to be a guest on Waller's show, The Grayson Waller Effect. He noted that Waller's behavior was only going to get worse and accepting the invitation was against his better judgment. Waller shared a video via Twitter reacting to the news that he will get a chance to sit down and chat with the Hall of Famer. Good day, Mr. Michaels. Just want to thank you for the night off and for finally getting back to me, said Waller. So now, next week at Roadblock, we can sit down and face-to-face -face at the biggest Grayson Waller effect of all time and probably discuss Stand and Deliver. It'll be awesome. I'm pretty excited because I don't know which version of Mr. Michaels will show up. When you sit down next to me and you look in the mirror at the man you used to be, are we going to see the heartbreak kid one more time or are we going to see the same old corporate stooge in a suit and a cowboy hat. All I ask is that you show me the proper respect because they say, never say never. Don't make me put you in a situation that you said you'd never be in again, said Waller. The feud between Waller and Michaels began when the former crashed the Vengeance Day post-show media, media call and was suspended. When he returned to NXT on February 14, he was forced to leave the arena after confronting Michaels backstage. It has been rumored and speculated that this could lead to the NXT debut of Dragon Lee. We'll have to wait and see. Could the demon version of Finn Balor be set to return at WrestleMania this year? A return date for the demon incarnation of Finn Balor has potentially been set after the idea was abandoned for the Royal Rumble Premium Live event. With a Hell in a Cell match planned for the Royal Rumble in January 2023, Edge was reportedly going to be facing the demon version of Finn Balor, but those plans were abandoned. 
Balor hasn't used the persona since his loss to Universal Champion Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules 2021. With Edge back on WWE television and no longer subject to an external filming schedule, it looks like the plans for a Demon match are back on. WRKD Wrestling wrote on Twitter that, quote, The idea of Finn Balor potentially being some form of the Demon has been floated for WrestleMania against Edge. This was previously planned for their scrapped Hell in a Cell match at the Royal Rumble, end quote. There's no news as to whether the match will feature the Hell in a Cell stipulation, but it was recently reported that Triple H wants a smaller card for the two-night WrestleMania 39 event on April 1st and 2nd. Of course, it was announced or revealed this past Monday on Raw that Balor had challenged Edge for WrestleMania. No word on if Edge has accepted yet, but could we see the Demon? Possibly, if the reports are accurate. Speaking of Raw, we have the ratings for this week's episode on the USA Network. This week's Monday Night Raw ratings have been revealed by WrestleNomics. According to the report, the February 27 edition of Raw drew an average of 1.768 million viewers overall. That's down from the February 20 episode of Raw, which averaged 2.006 million viewers. This past Monday's episode drew a 0.51 rating in the key 18 to 49 demographic. This is slightly down from last Monday's episode, which drew a 0.56 rating in the 18 to 49 demo. Now, obviously, it featured a lot of big moments, including a title change, Trish Stratus returning in the main event. But going down to that 1.7 million mark on the road to WrestleMania might be quite disappointing. But we'll see if the fallout of what happened this past week on Raw... In addition to the fallout of SmackDown with Cody Rhodes appearing to face off against Roman Reigns this Friday can help boost Raw as we get closer to the showcase of the Immortals. Now, speaking of WrestleMania, we could see a live music act appear at the show. It's become a staple, hasn't it, that we have bands perform live at WrestleMania to do certain special entrances for WWE superstars. And a possible live performance at WrestleMania 39 has been revealed thanks to a nearby venue advertising a music show for that weekend. As noted on Reddit, the band Alter Bridge are playing at the Yamava Resort and Casino on April 1st, the night of WrestleMania 39. The venue is apparently an hour from SoFi Stadium, although the doors for the Alter Bridge gig open at 7pm, which is the same um, uh, estimated time as the start of the WrestleMania 39 kickoff show. Uh, Alter Bridge are the, t- uh, the theme behind the tune that Edge currently uses and has done since March 7, uh, 2022. I mean, he's had it for years, to be honest, at this point. Um, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? We've got two sort of acts there that have the same uh, have uh, songs performed by the same band you've got judgment day who've got you know the 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 other side and you've also got edge also having metalinga so this has led to speculation with the band being in town they could be in attendance to play edge and i guess finn balor to the ring during their match at wrestlemania so very interesting that possibly, possibly we could have Alter Bridge performing live at WrestleMania. Now, there was some reaction on social media after Damage Control lost the Women's Tag Team Championships this past Monday night on Raw. And we could possibly see a different change when it comes to the Women's Tag Team Championship plans for WrestleMania. Originally, WWE was reportedly planning a Women's Tag Team Championship match for the event, pitting Dakota Kai and Io Sky of Damage Control against Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler for the Tag Team titles. Well, it seems like that plan won't be happening as EO Sky and Dakota Kai lost the Women's Tag Team Championships to Becky Lynch and Lita on Raw this week. Trish Stratus made her return to fight off Bayley in the closing moments of the match, allowing Lita and Becky to score the victory. With Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler still seemingly being groomed for a title match in Los Angeles and Triple H reportedly planning a smaller WrestleMania card this year, it seems as though Io and Dakota may end up missing this year's event. That is speculation, of course, it hasn't been reported. Trish's return would seemingly set up the six-woman tag team match between Becky Lynch, Lita and Trish Stratus that was originally planned for the Elimination Chamber event before plans changed due to the injury to Dakota Kai. While either match could still be possible for the show, it could be a situation where it's Becky Lynch and Lita versus Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler and Trish Stratus versus Bayley or we could see a six-person tag team match I'm not really sure either match is possible for the show but some fans have taken to social media to voice their displeasure over the former champions potentially not being featured on this year's event tweets that must be said are fan accounts (laughs) of Kai and Sky which there are several saying quote so Io and Dakota likely being booted off the Mania card still love Lita and Trish I hope this doesn't somehow lead to Io and Dakota being left off the Mania card. They've had to carry the non-existent tag team division. Bailey, EO, Dakota versus Becky, Trish, and Lita, question mark. 
Damage control deserve better than that. I still hope Dakota and Io get a WrestleMania match. If they go down the route of Trish versus Bailey and Ronda and Shayna versus Becky and Lita, I'm going to be so disgusted if Dakota and Io are left off the Mania card somehow. Again, these are all from fan accounts from <laughs> for Dakota Kai and Io Sky, so take it with a pinch of salt, certainly. Now, one former women's tag team champion is actually reportedly recovering from surgery at the moment. Now, an ex WWE star has commented on their past with Trinity Fatu, of course, also known as Naomi, and shared well wishes for her health. Uh, Ariane Andrew, formerly known as Cameron in WWE, was appearing as part of a virtual signing for Golden Ring Collectibles and shared an apparent update on Fatu status. Ariane said, quote, so she is recovering from shoulder surgery and, you know, I want her to answer the question for herself as to what's next for her. I know she's recovering from shoulder surgery, but I'm super proud of her. That's my sister from another mister. And I think you have to ask her for yourself how she's feeling. See if her shoulder shoulder is feeling good because she's recovering right now. Ask her that question. Now, she also said at one point there were plans for them to win the Women's Tag Team Championships in 22 and 2022. I don't know if that's the case, but this is what she said, quote, 2022 for me was not one of my best years. You're going to get tea. I'm going to give all the goodies. I've shared this, but I think the more I can share, the better. So I did the Royal Rumble. And then two days after, lost my dad, got called back to come back to WWE to get the tag team titles with Naomi. And then Thursday, they were like, never mind, girl, because Naomi and I were still talking about gear. Of course, it ended up that Sasha Banks and Naomi won the tag team championships at WrestleMania. But according to Cameron, the plan was for the former Funkadactyls to win the tag team titles at that year's Showcase of the Immortals. Now, last night on NXT, a lot of people are talking about Gigi Dolan's very emotional promo. Gigi Dolan poured her heart out in an emotional promo on this week's NXT as she addressed JC Jane's betrayal and the implosion of toxic attraction. Dolan acknowledged that it was fun being a mean girl as it was an excuse for her to channel my inner demons. All she was doing was escaping reality. Quote, JC, you know this because I trusted you, Dolan began. The last person who I let betray me and beat me down was my own mother. She used me as her personal punching bag for years and when I finally got the courage to escape from my home as a teenager I was determined to show my little brother that I could make it into WWE so we can escape the constant cycle of pain and suffering. At this point, Dolan began screaming in agony while recounting the hardships she's had to endure during her entire life. She added that her pent-up anger will be put to effective use in her match against Jane at Roadblock. Next week, bring everything you have because it won't be enough, Dolan warned Jane. I will take every ounce of pain, suffering and rage I've built up inside of me to hammer the final nail in the coffin of toxic attraction. So certainly an emotional promo that, as mentioned, got a lot of people talking and was very well done by Gigi Dolan. We also had a return last night on NXT and a British superstar is back on the developmental brand. Wesley's North American Championship Open Challenge started off last night's edition of the show and there was an all-out brawl to determine who would face the champion. However, after several NXT stars were seen brawling in an attempt to get to the ring for Wesley's North American Championship Open Challenge, including the likes of Hank Walker, Drew Gulak, Charlie Dempsey and Axiom, among others. However, it was actually the returning Nathan Fraser who made it to the ring for the big opportunity. Sin on NXT for the first time since October 2022. Fraser returned with fire as he uh, and Wesley put on a fantastic match. In the end of a hard-fought battle, Wesley was able to retain his championship. However, with fierce uh, with a fierce showing from Fraser, NXT is back on notice. So great to see Nathan Fraser back. Of course, he had issues with work visas, as have a lot of pro wrestling stars recently, but they are now sorted and he is back. Now, the most dangerous place in pro wrestling continues to be the NXT parking lot. And we've got another <laughs> another example of it. A backstage segment set to feature an interview of Nathan Fraser was interrupted as Katana Chance ran into the trainer's room to get a doctor. With Mackenzie Mitchell sending the cameras away from her interview to go follow the action, NXT fans got to see that Caden Carter was outside on the ground with Wendy Chu, who appeared to have been assaulted. With previously the parking lot attack of Nikita Lyons making headlines, who was going after the woman of NXT. In a later backstage segment, Caden Carter and Katana Chance lightly accused Tiffany Stratton of the assault, where Stratton turned the accusation back onto them. Having a Tiffany epiphany, she mused about whether or not she should become a detective, but also gave the sage advice that honestly, people just need to stay out of the NXT parking lot. I agree. It certainly is a dangerous place to be. Now, Stratton also wants a shot at the NXT Women's Championship. During the February 28th edition of NXT, Tiffany Stratton cut a promo and she made it clear she wants the NXT Women's title. The current champion, Roxanne Perez, will be defending her title against former NXT UK Women's Champion Mako Satomura at 
NXT roadblock next week. Quote, I have proven that I am the very best woman in NXT and all of you won't be satisfied by that, but I'm ne never satisfied, says Stratton. I don't want to be called the best. I want to be called the NXT Women's Champion. Roxanne Perez and Mako Satomura, I don't care who wins next week because that title belongs to me. So... Certainly, Tiffany Stratton could be next in line for an NXT Women's Championship match. Now, speaking of Roadblock, more matches have been announced for next week's NXT special event on the USA Network. With that passionate promo by Gigi Dolan, the stage is set for the true implosion of Toxic Attraction at next week's NXT Roadblock, as I mentioned. Uh, the Creed brothers were in search of a third in order to respond to a big challenge from Jinder Mahal and Inda Shear, and after getting rejected by Damian, uh, Damon Kemp. However, luckily for the brothers, they were joined by a very notable power Brom Breaker, the NXT champion offering to be their third for a big six-man tag team match at NXT Roadblock against the aforementioned trio of Mahal and Sheer. So more matches have been announced for the big special next week as we get closer to finding out what NXT Stand and Deliver is going to look like on WrestleMania weekend. Now, steering things back to the main roster, the Alpha Academy could reportedly be split up on television very soon. In a new tweet from the still new Scoops account, WRKD Wrestling, on Twitter, they shared the internal plan about possibly the Alpha Academy of Chad Gable and Otis being split up. WRKD Wrestling writing ahead of the match between Cody Rhodes and Chad Gable, quote, Cody Rhodes wants Chad Gable to have a big showing during their Raw match tonight, as Rhodes has been a fan of him and was one of the unnamed AEW talents hoping to have eventually bring Gable to the company, as reported by Meltzer in 2021. They then further elaborated, saying, quote, More on last night's tweet, there have been discussions of pushing Chad Gable as a more serious single star while moving Otis to maximum male models in a comedy role. G Gable and Otis are on the fence about splitting up due to their long-time close friendship. Of course, after an impressive match against Cody Rhodes, Gable continues to receive praise online, while Otis is similarly being lauded for his work with the maximum male models. So we could see a situation where Gable becomes a serious mid to upper card wrestler whilst Otis goes back into a role he has been used previously, which is as a comedic role, this time with the maximum male models. Do you think they should be split up? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is quite an interesting story considering all of the goings on between WWE and MLW, but Reels is coming to Peacock, but MLW will not be streamed due to their WWE deal. As previously reported, Major League Wrestling signed a deal with Reels in January 2023 to air MLW Underground on Tuesdays. However, a new deal for the channel may cause some issues for this deal. Per Hollywood Reporter, Peacock is adding a live linear system of the Reels channel beginning on March 1st. However, the feed will not feature the live stream of MLW Underground on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern due to Peacock's deal with WWE. WWE has exclusivity with Peacock due to the sale of the WWE Network to the platform, or the licensing, rather, of the platform back in 2021. Uh, it was January specifically, 2021. Peacock is the streaming home of WWE Premium Live Events, select original programming, and the WWE WWE Archive along with the WWE Live Feed. With the newest deal added to the app, Peacock now has live feeds for Reels, Hallmark, WWE and local NBC stations. This news follows a judge recently dismissing MLW's lawsuit against WWE, which claimed that WWE attempted to undermine their competition by preventing MLW from finalizing multiple media distribution deals. Of course, if we get any more updates on this, we'll let you know, but certainly an interesting story. Finally, WWE's been busy trademarking this week, and some interesting names have been trademarking as well. Recently, WWE filed to trademark the name Zack Ryder following the previous lapse in the trademark. Matt Cardona had previously attempted to secure the trademark to his former WWE name, but let it go when WWE fought his attempt. Now, in an application filing dated February 23rd, WWE has filed for the trademark of Ezekiel Jackson. Of course, Jackson was signed to WWE under a developmental contract in 2007. He made his main roster debut in 2008 as part of the uh, <laughs> gimmick with the Brian Kendrick as the bodyguard. During his time in WWE, he held the Intercontinental Championship. He was the final ever WWE ECW champion. He would depart from the company in 2014 and announced his retirement in 2015. Also listed on USPTO report are new listings for current superstars Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler, both in February uh, of this year as well. Possibly again due to their trademarks either lapsing or being close to lapsing so they refiled but there you go guys it's the latest wwe news for you be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner remember you can join the wn365 roster by clicking that join button let me know your thoughts on today's wwe news stories in the comment section below and i'll speak to you again very very soon
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.